Welcome back to The Mischief. I'm Valen. Today, we're covering Random Things, the basic and advanced redstone interfaces. Before I get into what they do, let me show you how you can make them. To start with, you'll need a stable ender pearl, which is made with some lapis, a regular ender pearl, and some obsidian. We'll get you one of these. It looks like a regular ender pearl, but doesn't quite function like one. Once you have it, You'll need to use it in a crafting table again with some redstone and iron, and you'll get yourself a basic redstone interface, which looks like this. Let's just drop that back off. But before this actually becomes very helpful, you'll need a tool, and that is the redstone tool, which is made the same way as a redstone torch would be, but one more stick. Let me grab one of those. And for the advanced stuff, which we'll cover at the end of this video, we'll need a position filter, which is four pieces of purple dye, and a piece of paper. We'll get you a position filter. And last but not least, the advanced redstone interface, which is a bunch of obsidian redstone blocks all around a regular basic redstone interface. All right, so. As in my last video, I have this little obstacle course here that essentially demonstrates redstone signals and how they're going to work with the basic redstone interface. So, to start with, uh, the redstone activator, for those that are not familiar, I have another video on this, but it essentially will give a redstone signal to something. Like so. And I will probably be using this to demonstrate as well as the levers here. So, to start with, I have the basic redstone interface placed down. And without anything, it will tell you if it's intersected with anything. So let me place down a brand new one here, and you can see that it has no target. Essentially, you then take your redstone tool, right click on it, it will turn bright red, and then you tell it what you want it to give a redstone signal to. For instance, this door or the uh, block that it's attached to, let's choose that block. And you'll see a little red beam going to it. In fact, let's choose the door if we can here. There we go. And it will actually show that it's giving a redstone signal to the door with this beam. Now when we apply a redstone signal to this, it will then apply the redstone signal to where you direct it. It has an infinite range, but it will not work across dimensions. So that can be really, really useful. Uh, and it's very simple to readjust where you want it to actually work. And you can use this with levers uh, or other items like that. There you go. Very simple and straightforward. Uh, you can see that it will work. In this case, the redstone tool will actually highlight what areas it's actually connected to. And in this one, I have it connected to the redstone torch. Now, if I use this, you notice nothing happens. But if I use the redstone activator, which does work with redstone torches, it will function. So. There is one little difference there that I found. Otherwise, it functions as it normally would with other uh, levers and buttons and so on. Uh, I did find that levers are much more reliable than buttons are. So this, of course, will not work with redstone block because that is a permanently on redstone signal. Uh, next, we've got this here with just a regular piston. And you can see it is currently going to the redstone that goes up to it. Pretty neat. Uh, now let's switch it over, and it's going directly to the unit instead. And you can see that it actually is having a little trouble with functioning in this manner. But with the redstone activator, I can get it to work properly. So with this here, we have another that is hooked up to well, the redstone here. And if I end up switching it over to the lamp, you can see that it works just the same as if you were using it otherwise. So now the redstone lamp is giving the signal and it's coming down the redstone and out on the back as well. So it is giving a redstone signal off of the target block. And in this one, there you go. Now the problem that we're having with this is that uh, it I can't really put a lever on one of these. So that's kind of the problem with what's going on there. But if you end up having it go to a block adjacent to it, um, let's actually uh, take off this redstone and I will show you here. If I right click this and then I right click the block under it, there you go. Now it should work properly. And there we go. So keep in mind if you're using a lever, it's not going to work uh, quite the same way with those. Now, of course, down here we have 
it's only going to the redstone in this case. So you can see here, and I can try and make this actually go to this one, but it's not going to function because pistons just don't work in that manner. So you're going to want to make sure that uh, you know you don't just directly link it to the piston uh, unless you uh, kind of know what you're doing there. Now in this case here, I'll get to this one in a minute. That's going to be part of a more elaborate one. But to demonstrate, uh, I need a piece of redstone. Let me grab one of these here. And you know already probably from vanilla mechanics, you cannot put redstone on glass. So that is something that you need to keep in mind. If you uh, link it to a piece of glass, it will not function. But if you end up replacing it with something that redstone can up be applied to, then it will work as normal. So moving on, we have a little bit more complex of stuff going on here. Uh, whoops, I just lost my tool. There we go, got it back again. So with this, I currently have this set up where this block here is connected to this block here going through other blocks and it's connected to this block here going through other blocks going over here up there way over there and to this sand block which should power this and you'll notice I have a red beam going up above that well that's another block over here now, feasibly I could have uh, you know another one of these underneath or something but I'm just showing that you can actually daisy chain these together if you want so by turning that on, this is activated, 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 activated. They've all activated, but that lamp is not on yet. Well, that's because I've got this one hooked up to it. And you can see it actually will turn it on. Turn it back off, and you'll notice the lamp does not work because it's only activating the space above it. But if I turn that back on, turn the lamp on, turn it off, the lamp is stuck there. <laughs> Just a little bit of uh, interest. Not that this is really going to change anything for mechanics, but once you turn it off, it will then allow it to drop down because it's holding it in place while it's giving it the redstone signal. So, we also have other different ideas that you can come up with. I mean, it's fantastic the different things you can work with on this. Using your redstone tool, you can see that I currently have this hooked up to here, and it's currently this one is... Uh, hooked up to this, this one's hooked up to that, that, and it essentially makes a big U-shape. Even though this one's hooked up to here, it actually provides a redstone signal off of it, which this is an adjacent block, so therefore it accepts it as well. And that's how that one works. Now, to get into even more advanced stuff, we have the position filter and the advanced redstone interface. So, by putting down an advanced redstone interface, just like this here, we will be able to have multiples work off of one. So to give an example in this case, um, this is just going to be one simple setup so that you can see how it works. If I right click it, it opens a little uh, user interface here that you can insert position filters with. So if I tell it, I want this block here to activate with a redstone signal. Oops, all right, well, let's make it that block there with the redstone is what I want it to work with then I can put that in there and it will actually end up having the coordinates on that paper. I have coordinates on another one as well. So if I end up flicking the switch, you'll see that it is actually giving a constant signal. Now if I drop using that, the redstone tool, all it does in this case is just show you the beams and where they're going, as well as the different strengths that you have. Now of course I have this on a circular circuit, <laughs> on a circuit, so that I'm not redundant in my uh, terminology, uh, it essentially will just constantly give a blinking effect. And, which I currently have this going to a block of sand, which is giving off a redstone signal, shooting over to this lamp. Now, if you want to change the ones that these are, simple enough, you just take out the signal, or the uh, paper that you want, and you can reattach it to what you would like it to be. Now, currently it's saying that this one is attached to that block of sand. I can change it to this one or that one just by right clicking on the block that I want it to give off the signal. So let's put it on that one. Then I'll put it back in and there we go. And it is now blinking and the redstone over here is no longer blinking. So that's just the functionality of how this works. Now if you want to use it in a much bigger way uh, so that it powers multiple things at once, then that's what this is for. One single block is currently giving off a whole lot of beams. It's giving off four to be exact, which I have it going through to several of these blocks down here. I have it going to the different uh, sand blocks. Uh, in this case, I actually have it hooked up to the, um, the uh, 
pistons, but uh, I do recommend that you have it uh, hooked to an adjacent block of the piston and not the piston itself, because it can get a little bit uh, off. But um, since these are closed, I can activate the other side, and you can see how it functions in this manner. And in each one is four different uh, locations around each. Pretty darn cool stuff. And remember, you can have this a really long distance away. So if you have an area that is uh, chunk loaded or another player in it or something, you can end up flicking the switch and affecting something on a very remote area or just something uh, handy like a doorway or uh, inventory access. So that about does it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, give a like, comment, uh, share, subscribe. And until next time, we'll see ya.